Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome. Uh, this is a press conference I'm so excited to offer today uh, because today I am proudly here to appoint Jessica Brown to serve as Burlington's next city attorney, filling a very crucial position here in the city, which has remained vacant for more than two years. Jessica earned her law degree from Georgetown University in May of 1996. And while there, she was a public interest, uh, interest law scholar and taught at the university's street law clinic. Jessica has 20 years of a legal career that includes trial work, appellate work, and attorney supervision, and most recently teaching as an assistant professor of law at the Vermont Law, School, law and Graduate School Center's uh, Center for Justice Reform. Those who know Jessica describe her as a collaborative and creative leader and with a deep commitment to equity and justice. As I learned more about Jessica during our appointment process, I was impressed by her leadership experience, her thoughtfulness in her approach to complex problem solving and a commitment to public service. And if there's anything that I've known and learned in the last three months, this is exactly the kind of leadership that we need um, here in the city of Burlington. We also share many values, especially those of equity, service, and responsibility. And for responsibility, this is especially important in the context that we are need to be good stewards of the public good as city leaders here in Burlington. I also appreciate her commitment to education and continual learning. As an assistant professor at the Vermont Law and Graduate School, she has shown a commitment to supporting the growth of other legal professionals. And this is the type of attorney I need in my next city attorney. I know she will collaborate with our existing, uh, current, skilled, and dedicated assistant city attorneys and will help us hire two very capable new attorneys to fill the two remaining vacancies within this department. I am grateful to the three senior city department heads who assisted me in the appointment hiring process. DPW uh, Director Chafin Spencer, who walked in on cue, um, <laughs> CEDO Director uh, Brian Pine, and our former Director of Planning, uh, Megan Tuttle. Their collective knowledge and experience with the city and with former city attorneys help to affirm my confidence that Jessica will be a stellar next city attorney for our city. Finally, and very noteworthy, if confirmed, Jessica will be the first black woman to serve in the role of city attorney in our entire city's history. This is a historic and notable as we know that representation matters and the perspectives of women, people of color, and folks with other marginalized voices in our community have for too long been unheard in significant position, positions such as mayor and city attorney. I will ask the city council to confirm Jessica's appointment at the city council meeting this coming Monday, July 15th. And if confirmed, Jessica will begin her service to the city on August 19th. Interim City Attorney Joe McNeil will continue to serve in the role until August 19th and will support the office as needed during the upcoming transition. Thank you all for being here and I'd like to introduce Attorney Jessica Brown. Good morning. Um, thank you. So much, Mayor Mulvaney Stanek, uh, for your generous introduction, and thank you to Council President Travers and Council Member Grant for your support here today. I am truly honored and humbled to be considered for appointment as the Burlington City Attorney because I fully understand the enormous responsibility of the position. As you've heard, I have been a practicing attorney for over 20 years. And from 2013 to 2021, I practiced here in Burlington as a public defender. Having represented some of this city's most marginalized people, I am keenly aware of many of the challenges Burlington faces. I also know that Mayor Mulvaney Stanek and each city council member sought elected office to do their best to address the needs of their constituents, and it will be my job as city attorney to help guide them in their work to make Burlington its best for all of its residents and visitors. Fortunately, the city attorney's office is not a solo practice. There are currently three valiant assistant city attorneys who have been keeping the office afloat doing the work of six people with the support of our public information officer, our paralegal, our support staff, I'm eager to fully staff the office and provide the consistent and stable management that will allow a full city attorney's office roster to continue to provide excellent legal advice and support to the mayor, the city council, 
and the 18 city departments that keep Burlington functioning, safe, and vibrant. I would be remiss if I did not mention and thank interim city attorney, Joe McNeil, who has been shepherding the office through this time of transition. Attorney McNeil and other former city attorneys have already offered me invaluable insights into the job. I am grateful that I will be able to continue to tap into their wisdom and experience. In addition to continuing to hire for the office, supporting the ongoing day-to-day -day work of the office and learning my role in the city council meetings, I anticipate that my first weeks and months as city attorney will focus on meeting with city department leaders to hear directly from them what their needs are from the city attorney's office, how the city attorney's office has best served those needs historically, and how we can best serve those needs moving forward. Building relationships, collaborating whenever possible, and establishing trust with hard work and with integrity are values that have served me well throughout my career. Burlington is so lucky to be full of devoted elected officials and committed city employees, and I look forward to working with all of them. Thank you so much. It's like a stage, you know, spot. you're totally in the right spot. And next up, we're going to hear from Council President Ben Travers. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Uh, thank you, Mayor, and thank you for being here, Attorney Brown, and I appreciate your being here as well, Councillor Grant. Uh, as a former Assistant Corporation Counsel for the City of New York and as an in-house attorney for another large employer here locally, I'm, I'm a bit biased on this, but I do believe it's vitally important uh, to have um, able uh, and available uh, it, counsel. Uh, I'm thrilled and excited that you uh, focused on this appointment upon taking office, Mayor Mulvaney Stanek. Uh, I want to echo your thanks to the folks that have uh, kept the city attorney's office running here over the last couple years. Uh, it is time now for uh, someone to take the head of that office, um, uh, albeit very grateful as well for Attorney McNeil and his work. And I'm excited about the historic appointment of Attorney Brown. Uh, many of us in the city council have had an opportunity to uh, meet with Attorney Brown and, and could not be uh, more thrilled about this appointment. I'm looking forward to our working together, Jessica. And um, thank you, Mayor, again, for your efforts here in, in, in finding Attorney Brown to take the helm of this office. Thank you. And then uh, next up, we'll hear from Central District City Councilor Milo Grant, who is also the chair of our Public Safety Committee. Thank you uh, so much. I, um, I had some things to say, but a lot of it was already said, so I try really hard not to be repetitive. I do want to echo the thanks for the members of the city attorney's office that have been continuing to work through what has quite frankly been a difficult time the last few years. There's been a lack of stability in that department that has uh, at times affected a number of things, especially in the realm of community safety, which I joined when I became a police commissioner. And there were at times where we needed to rely on certain things um, from the city attorney's office and quite frankly, didn't always get the help we need because of a lack of understanding of what was happening in our criminal justice uh, system. Um, having an equity lens helps us all regardless of our backgrounds. Um, it will actually decrease liability against the city and it is something that we need to, to think about. So I am uh, so happy to welcome this appointment of Jessica Brown. I think she'll be the leader that we need to help us with these things. Um, and I think that um, it'll be really, when I was reading about her background, it really spoke to me because I have been really deep into the issues of community safety. And having this particular background of working in the courts, knowing what's happening in our courts, what is interfering with the best outcomes for um, people who are on trial, victims of crime, and then the city and the residents as a whole, I think that this is a perspective that is sorely needed and we'll have the opportunity um, to have that. I also like the fact that uh, she previously attended CompStat meetings, which I think are really important. I know when I 
started attending um, our city's ComStat meetings, it was the most important meeting that I was going to in, in terms of understanding what was happening um, on the ground in the city. So uh, once again, I thank the mayor for this appointment. I thank Jessica Brown for accepting, and I thank Councilor Travers for supporting this as well. And I hope that we will have a unanimous vote with the city council on Monday. Thank you so much. Dance. It's, a, it's actually a joyful moment to be able to have a positive press conference about something that is not only historic but so needed and a positive moment for the city where we have such a capable and skilled person willing to put up her hand and help lead the city forward. So with that, we are open for questions. And this is a reference to a concept meeting. Russell, could you explain what that is to Council and Mayor? Uh, certainly. So that is a meeting, um, monthly meeting, includes city councilors and includes various stakeholders across the community safety spectrum and also people who uh, work with individuals who suffer from substance use disorder. Uh, so we'll have uh, the police department there, the fire department there. We receive reports from uh, Sarah George related to um, overdose deaths. We hear information about what's being done on the ground to address the drug crisis. We hear from um, visitors who come. Uh, for example, we had a great presentation from On Point, which is an operating overdose prevention center in New York City. Uh, we also heard from someone who operates one in um, Vancouver. So we get that type of information. So we look at what we're doing, what is working, what is not working, what are other people doing, what is success. And I just find it to be a, a very um, informational uh, meeting in, in terms of understanding what, what's going on in our city and uh, the levels that we can work to address our issues. I would also just add that I really appreciate that Attorney Brown has so much experience here in our city, uh, not only as working as a public defender, but her, her interest and willingness to consistently participate at CompStat during the period of years she was there it just really shows how she values community partners, how she values um, really thinking in more innovative ways to think about how this city can continue to address what is everyone at this point knows is a, it's an extreme public health crisis in terms of our opioid crisis and really helping folks address this public health um, emergency. Other questions? I think for Attorney Brown. Um, so after two decades of practicing the community, what makes you want to step into this role, which is really challenging and take a lot of time, but you know, why did you want to focus on this? I'm definitely excited and inspired not to um, kiss up too much, but by the new mayoral uh, administration. Um, and uh, you know, even just watching as the new uh, administration has started working in Burlington, seeing um, the various advisory teams that Mayor Mulvaney Stanek has put together, um, seeing other people that she has, you know, chosen to take on roles in her administration um, has excited me about what I think she can accomplish in Burlington. Um, and so, you know, having worked here for a long time, um, I'm devoted to this city too. And I want it, you know, it's our biggest city. It's the city that people fall in love with when they first visit Vermont. Um, and I'm just, you know, I'm a person who's worked in service my whole career. And it, truly, I feel like it's an honor to be considered to hold such an important role in helping uh, to be of service um, to make Burlington, you know, the best that it can be, um, the safest it can be for everybody who lives here and visits here, um, and so that people can thrive in this city. You're welcome. Anything else? Well, let me just say that it might be fair to say that uh, the city attorney's office has been, has had the highest rate of turnover of staff in the last 10 or 20 years. So has there been any discussion about stabilizing that staff? Is this a step in the direction to stabilizing that staff? So it's a good it's a good observation because I also came in and I have to say, even within the first week of being mayor, I was really surprised how this city was has been able, frankly, to operate without three attorneys in this attorney's office. It's a there's that's a 
um, undue burden on the existing staff, and it really shows how dedicated, frankly, I'm looking at, a, at the one who was able to be here today, uh, and, and the support staff as well. Um, that is a lot to hold for uh, a modern day city with the kinds of complexities and challenges that we're juggling right now. Um, and so what I think that tells me, at least, when we looked at uh, the challenges of being able to recruit and retain people, most importantly, is just how I believe um, how underpaid people are within the city attorney's office that has really, I mean, if you look at any private firm, it makes it very hard for someone who might even be interested in stepping into public service to make that choice because we are, I think, really underpaying our city staff uh, within that department. Um, it also just points to, I think, the challenges of making sure that we're building a workable culture for folks so that they're not overworked. Um, I really fear, I hope they stay, um, our existing three because they've been really holding things down. And that is why I'm very excited not only to hire a city attorney um, uh, in this month, but to move on to filling the other two vacancies. Because with a strong leader like Attorney Brown at the helm, that will only help us with both recruiting and setting a vision and course for that department that I think will be very needed for re uh, not only recruiting our other two additional attorneys, but retaining our entire staff so that they really feel like they are a co cohesive team and really have built out the expertise needed to support the city. Mm -hmm. Anything else? I like happy press conferences. Okay, all right, well, we'll stick around if there's any additional questions. Thank you all so much for coming. Appreciate it.